dear brothers and sisters i started saj marg in 1964 so almost 50 years have gone by practicing the system and that's a big slice out of the 84 years i have been here on earth you all have seen me pottering around many parts of the world till i think 2005 2004 or five or something like that but uh, age has its own requirements and conforming to that i have had to cut down on my travels which are now restricted to indian centers only so this old lion can no longer roam the jungles as it used to do but happily the pride has grown to include many younger lions who are now prepared to do the roaring and the you know rampaging around all the countries of the world like this we have evolved the scheme now of younger people to travel to various parts of the world brother santosh sinwarsan for the us but that person akshla for the oceania region brother vinod mishra for the far east and things like that of course i follow their movements and they follow all of you in your spiritual life to the extent that i can but with no reduction in the interest in your welfare which is the only concern in my life you know you people from all over the world have so many excellences of character of ability to perform of education and so on if the western nations of the world share a distinct and distinctive ability to go forth and conquer as was exemplified in the spirit which conquered the wild west in the in the old america and later on by the wars of independence england is singularly known for its exploits on the oceans its acquisition of an empire which once boasted that the sun never set on it it's almost a proverb that the sun never sets on the british empire the countries of the former ussr had their own powers and their own pride and their own acquisitions they set the same religion and to call a new religion which was only a political system in the east of course too they have their own excellences their own pride i am not speaking now of lions and uh, their excellences in production in uh, developing atomic science and so on into which even china is now bravely entered and entering perhaps to equal perhaps to exceed other nations we have abhyasis in all these countries sisters and brothers and their welfare especially spiritual welfare remains the main concern for the mission this is why we have centers all over the world i believe we now have centers in about 150 countries in this world which is 
certainly not a small number, but considering the number of countries and the population, a mere drop in an ocean. But yet, to look after them, to keep their interests alive in pursuit of their spiritual life is a very tough thing. I have seen a lot of movies of the Wild West, you know, the cowboys herding huge herds of cattle for sale. Many grown in very legal and rightfully owned huge farms, cattle farms, many stolen, rustled as they used to say, but all on the move to be sold at what I have seen in the movies, two dollars on the hoof. Two dollars per head of cattle in those days. And so much effort behind the driving and the raising and the protecting, you know, cowboys equipped with lassos, very bold, impetuous, courageous, full of energy. And what they ate was the same thing day after day after day after day. No variety. No variety in their work, no variety in what they ate or drank. But with all, enormously energetic in pursuit of their own trade or profession. This sort of education, especially in the Western Hemisphere, has tended to make a human being believe in himself or herself totally. Even children are left to learn by themselves. And the common thing I've heard from so many parents of even very young children is, but Shariji, they must learn from their own experience. I don't think it needs me to point out to all of you the tragic consequences of such education, of such an attitude to how a child should grow up totally self-dependent. I have heard so many stories of children leaving home at the age of 10, 11, 12, you know, going as uh, sailors, working their way on ships around the globe, and of course accumulating experience. But how much of it was good? How much of it was good or useful in later life? And do people realize how enormously bad much of it was in later life? Because at that age, you know, it is well known that children do not discriminate. That is why they need the wise elders to discriminate for them, to choose for them, to guide them. Children should acquire under the guidance of the elders. But a system of education which throws them largely upon themselves, on their own resources, not merely of strength and physical ability, but on how to judge. I think that's asking too much of children and perhaps much of the trouble that we see in the world today, the chaos, the, the lack of, uh, shall we say, proper relationships, all this stems from, in my mind, such education. Anything goes so long as you can take it and keep it. That seems to be one motto. Nothing succeeds like success. In whatever way we may succeed, seems to be the next. No one is a thief until he is found out. Seems to be a much more damaging adage. We see what has happened to the world in the last couple of years. The economic meltdown. And now, in the last week, the threatening meltdown of nuclear reactors in Japan and where it will spread, we don't know. You see, the economic meltdown has shattered the economies of many countries of this world where they were supposed to be prosperous, happy, well-to-do, and sure of themselves from here to eternity. They had no doubts. 
they had their own ego fortified by such experience as they had got i won't it's not enough to say fortified but swollen beyond all limits by such experiences as they had gained by such victories as their people had gained and today all of a sudden everything is collapsing now you know it is good to be self reliant in fields in which it is good to be self reliant i mean i have to run i have to walk i have to be able to feed myself to bathe myself to wash myself self reliance in these aspects of uh, a fundamental nature in day to day life has to be there this is something which i admire very greatly in people of the west where people aged even 85 90 92 they live alone in their own rooms managing everything by themselves and of course one day they are discovered after they have given up their lives is such self dependence something we should seek or should such people be looked after by society not merely by a visit by a nurse or someone what say they but to live in a community where they are loved where they are needed where they are wanted where they are cared for and where they feel at home today that at home this is missing so you see to what extent our uh, thrust to develop self reliance over the past couple of centuries has led us this is just you know the tip of the iceberg going deeper we find it has led to a total negation of the superior powers i am not only talking of heavenly powers but of those powers latent in ourselves intuition for instance we have our view you used to have what we called uh, petrol tanks or reserve petrol tanks when the main tank was by chance depleted we switched on the reserve tank the same was true of uh, sportsmen especially athletics where they drew upon a special power when everything was going where did it come from not from the muscles not from the bones not from the sinews it was a reliance on self which is not this physical self this corporeal self but something inside you see now i heard that the maasai of africa they have to the youth have to kill a lion or had to kill a lion in the old days when there were lions to be killed and eat the heart to get courage but does eating the heart of a lion give courage do westerners do it today do the chinese do it courage is something that has to come from inside <clears throat> and if you look at it etymologically it means putting something into your heart and who puts this something into your heart most of us cannot do it ourselves therefore we have teachers we have people who are advisors who are people who encourage us even if it's just a crowd cheering for you after you are, while you are running so this encouragement comes from the word courage you know, to bring courage into the heart the cœur you know from the french language latin beyond that comes a region which we call the divine region see, with which a modern human beings especially in the western hemisphere and mostly some of the extreme east too and the communist philosophies would seem to have cut off connection totally what god which god where is god things which we have heard questions which we have heard asked by the great asuric emper- emperors of the past in india like ravana like kumbhakarna you know like kamsa where is god to ask him to show himself before me questions asked thousands of years ago centuries ago in india are no being asked in modern times in the west 
which is so highly educated, so highly, you know, affected by science and technological development, that they think there's no need for a God. So we stand on the brink of a cliff, see, not knowing how to jump, where to jump, and if we jump, whether we will survive. We have been too deeply, uh, shall we say, uh, stay jacketed into this technological revolution and its requirements. We have become too dependent on ex external things for our, uh, not merely satisfaction and comfort, but even for our health. Too much energy is being used to outside ourselves. Our own energies are lying unused. And if you are educated enough to think that you must use energy, we waste it in uh, pursuits like jogging, mountain climbing, buggy jumping and whatnot. Energy has to be used otherwise. What Babuji says of Sahaj Bhan, you know, if a preceptor doesn't work, power grossness. Having power and not utilizing it will produce power grossness. It goes for physical energies too, even within yourself. And mental energy is much worse. If you stop thinking, if you stop using your head, giving it real grist, you know. Like, you know, you must have foods which you must chew and digest, not just eat pappy foods, which result in colon cancer at a later age. If you don't use your minds and make it work really hard, what all do we get? I don't know. So many diseases are there where the cells of the brain break down. And what of the heart? If you don't use the heart for the purpose for which it has been put into you, to love. The heart is not there to be loved. The heart is there to love. But that also has been forgotten. People only want to be loved. You see it in every nauseating situation. Love me. Hold me hard. Hold me tight. Adults behaving like, you know, children, frightened children. No stability in any relationship. Because where the heart is not involved, there is no stability. So you see, Sahaj Mahārg has to be taken in a very, very profound sense. Profound in the sense of depth. Profound in the sense of an expanding universe where the heart goes everything. Now my young boys, my young lions are coming to, shall we say, learn from you and also to help you to learn from Sahaj Marg what we have to do. What all do we have to eschew in our lives? Eschew dependence on external circumstances. Babuji says, live simply and in tune with nature. Some countries are consuming 60% of the world's energy, one country. And they have, I don't know, 10% or 4% less of the world's population. What happens if all this energy is lost? Atomic powers break down, atomic plants get destroyed. It happened once, you know, once in the U.S. that power failed for some 18 hours and there was chaos. There was fear, all pervading fear. Mere 18 hours. What happens if it goes forever? We have predictions that, uh, you know, electricity will go very soon, perhaps. We hear in the last few days about Japan's predicament about power. This one power plant or two power plants not working, not generating power. Japan is heavily dependent on atomic power. So be simple and live in tune with nature. We have to go more and more towards that. There is no use reading Thoreau's beautiful book, you know, Walden. 
about how we lived for so many months or years, I don't remember. Somewhere in Boston, or was it? Yes, Massachusetts. By the side of a lake, he built his own log hut and lived there in peace and utter calm. Once you live like that, you will not be willing to come into the cities to live in air-conditioned rooms on the 28th floor of a building, going up by a lift, unable to climb down if you have to. I don't have to remind you about 9-11 and its calamitous uh, situation that it created. But for, you know, God's grace, I should think, of course, many of you may think, why was it not there earlier to stop all this nonsense? But Babaji has said, you know, like you have to give children problems, both physical and mental, to help them to overcome, because that is the process of growth. Growth, may, growth means increasingly able to overcome bigger and bigger problems, bigger and bigger difficulties, until you overcome the biggest problem of all, death. Meet it fearlessly, walk over it, and there you are in a new realm, in a new zone, in a new dimension, of which you could not even dream before. So, dear brothers and sisters, these are the things you know to which I would have referred had I been with you all, as I used to be, but I cannot be anymore unless you come to see me in Manapakum. Even then, it is not possible to, you know, sit at length with you all and, shall we say, gab, <laughs> like I used to. But uh, I am happy that the next generation is up. And like, you know, from one seed comes a tree and from one tree comes a million seeds. So this must grow. It, every seed you plant must bear a hundred seeds. And each of those a hundred and so on, it must multiply, you know. And that is the purpose of Sahaj Bank. Not only for your own individual growth and satisfaction and elevation and deliberation and things like that. But to become like him, so that someone else can become like him too through you, and so it goes on. Like one candle can light a million candles. So please, I request all of you to understand the seriousness of the spiritual pursuit, of its global significance for humanity. I mean, scientists may poo-poo it, politicians may laugh at it, but people who know and know that they know, you know, they are the wise, follow them. That's what the old Chinese proverb says. Follow them so that you too may know, and know that you know what there is to do. I pray for you all. Thank you.